Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the privilege to invite for the remarks Dr. Atik Rema, Executive Director, Bangladesh Center for Advanced Studies, Vikash Bangladesh. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Shishil Koyala, Honourable Chair, distinguished guest on the podium, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, and many of the faces and people who have been involved in the climate change, particularly in the CBA movement. On behalf of the organizers, I add my welcome to all of you, and we look forward to a very active, participatory, and hopefully a significant outcome of this conference, the eighth in the series of community based adaptation. Now, to this audience, one doesn't have to reiterate that climate change is already here and now. The Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change in its fifth assessment report of the two working groups have already stated the case of science quite categorically that climate change is here and now. The impacts of climate change are already being felt in various parts of the world. Who will face these consequences most? Are the communities themselves, the ecosystems, the enterprises, and the institutions? So our whole economic and ecological system will be, is being affected by climate change. One of the built-in tragedies of climate change is that the greatest impact will be on the most vulnerable who happen to be the poor, and amongst them, the women and the children and the aged in, across the world. This is not to say that the rich will be spared. As we see in the recent events, cyclone, the hurricane Sandy in USA, the drought in Australia, in California, the most severe cyclone in Philippines and flood in UK, Germany, Eastern Europe and many parts of the world. So the days are now here where it doesn't distinguish the rich and the poor. The rich are the industrialized countries and developed urban systems have developed certain mechanisms over the period of history to withstand many of these onslaughts. One, another tragedy is that climate change is talked in terms of global warming and the Copenhagen summit has said crossing two degrees centigrade by end of the century will be a gross violation of all the systems and will create havoc. Unfortunately, the two degrees limit by end of the century probably has been crossed by some other reports of World Bank and others, and some are talking about three degrees and four degrees. The meaning of that is going to be quite significant. However, the urging from IPCC is to reduce this rapidly by all the countries, particularly led by the industrialized countries, will commit themselves to reduce <coughs> climate change by reducing the emissions and would drive some of the emissions that's already there. This is mitigation. But as mitigation increases, miti lack of mitigation and increase of emission continues, the onslaught of adaptation needs will increase and the vulnerability of the poorest will increase. 
what this group of this community of people, scientists, practitioners, development experts, environmental science activists, and above all people working on the ground to help the poorest to eke out a good living and improve their lot. All those communities who are present here know that climate change impacts are visible in most countries, whether they are Pacific Island, coastal areas, high mountain areas like Nepal or coastal uh, areas of Bangladesh and other countries. In response to that, the community-based adaptation had emerged as in the early, about 10 years ago in 2005, and the first three conferences were held in Bangladesh where it took its first root and the approach and the issues discussed in those were conceptualization of CBA and finding the linking of CBA with development and disaster risk reduction. So this is vital that we understand the link between climate change development and disaster. Subsequently, climate change science, particularly the approach of community adaptation had evolved and partnerships were understood better. In 2009, in the third conference, knowledge and practices of CBA sectoral approaches and across the world were shared and huge amount of information had come that people are already coping. The story is no more when they shall go. They are already coping under very dire circumstances. In 2009, we looked at the knowledge and practices, and 2010 and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, the CBA practices across the world and research and policy guidance were sought. In 2011, in Dhaka again, how do we scale up community based adaptation were discussed, and 2012 in Vietnam, how do we communicate climate change? communication, particularly community-based adaptation across the world, and in 2013 again in Bangladesh, again presided over by the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, the issue of mainstreaming, how do we mainstream? And here we are talking about financing, particularly at the local level. The issue in front of us is how do we mobilize the finances? That makes one of the central issues. <coughs> As we know, in the process of negotiation, the industrialist countries have committed themselves earlier on, but now has been postponed to 2012 to 100 billion dollar per year. Sandy cyclone alone has costed a loss of anything between 60 to 160 billion dollar, depending on which estimate you assess. So. The poor across the world are already doing things and paying with their own costs. Nobody else has money, their own money, their labor, their time, the least they can afford. So there is a need for, for increasing rapidly and reaching the funds to the communities as they are. Very often the international mechanism is intergovernmental and the funds will flow through the government. It is incumbent of the government, of all governments, to reach that finance to the poorest in the largest amount and in the rapid way in the process of transparency and accountability. Now those are tall orders. However, Nepal has given the leadership, as Selena said, by committing 80% of all funds to reach the communities and the poorest. We should like to follow that or do something towards that. Hence, this is an area for the next few days we'll be discussing the potential sources of funding, how impacts are happening and how it can be used, and we would like to bring this whole discussion to the level of this Kathmandu Declaration which will go forward. With those words and welcoming everybody again, and thanking the Honourable Prime Minister for joining us. I am very pleased to say that
this conference has brought together some of the best practitioners, activists from across the world, and we look forward to a very meaningful five days of activity starting already in the last few visits that we had. Thank you very much.